Bow patiently waiting For the stream of faith which brings life forever mm-hmm. The man of tomorrow Bell siphon or, or an all made one, this is to show you the working principle and how to construct one. Here I have um, a tube with an end cap, and a second tube with an end cap, one needs to fit inside the other. Okay, any tubing will do. Obviously, you don't want it to be, you want this to fit quite snugly, stop any of your uh, medium going down the inside. So, the snugger you can get that, the better. I'm just using pieces of pipe which were available. Um, a tank. Fitting, take the first end cap, remove it, drill a hole the same size as the tank fitting that you put into your tank. Place this in the tank, imagine this boards the tank and we pass straight through through the bottom of the tank and fit in. And keeping this green end cap in our case, this is an old fishing rod tube. Now I drill a series of holes through the bottom and then using the bottom hole as a template to cut the bigger hole using the old saw. This happens to be the same size hole saw as I used for the bottom of the tank. So, piece of tubing, pipe reducer going up to the next size, reducing down to your tube, again just the next size, and then the shroud back on. Okay, and then the bell. The bell housing needs to have a hole put at the bottom. Yeah, I put one hole here right at the bottom, then I put another one, well, uh, an angle, the 90 degrees, but the width of the hole up again. And once the bell siphon starts to break the siphon, yeah, it will struggle at first, increase the size of the hole, up the next drill size, and so on until it works every time. Dead simple way of tuning them up. I've tried slots, I've tried curves and stuff, we always have problems with them. The hole works dead well. Um, you can always run the hole straight through. It's better to run the hole straight through on both sides. Just in case you're a, um, a little bit cockeyed, uh, you know, either way, you'll always get it done. So then, once you have your, your hole in it, it just slides quite simply inside it. And that's the complete unit. Missing the tank, of course. So, once again, it's two pieces of tubing with end caps. One. the larger one is used for the strainer one tank fitting one reducer and one um, a small piece of pipe there's all the components you require you can buy them um, but this is how to work how to make one so the simplest way of explaining how this works to you is by removing this part the, the, the shroud. And what actually happens is your water fills up in the tank, fills up in the tank as it fills up in the tank, fills up in the tank eventually it fills up inside here. Oops, and the water starts to run down this hole. Yeah, it will start to run down the hole. Eventually, the water will fill up the hole and it will pull the air down. As it pulls the air down, which is trapped in here. It will pull the water up and the siphon will begin. It will siphon all the way down to your hole in the bottom. If it carries on running, your siphon's not breaking, you need a larger hole. There you go. Once again, up. The bell siphon. We've put a clear one. It's a clear tank so you can see straight through it. You can see there, they're the major components. So I will uh, I'll take it apart and show you how it goes together. Well, here we have the bottom of the shroud. You can see, I've got already cut these in. So, first piece, keep your washer on. And then place the rubber washer. You may have to get an extra one, an extra rubber washer. It might not come with a kit. Okay. And I'll place that through the tank. Put the other washer on, and then the thread. 
and tighten this up now. Shroud, uh, reducer. Inside. Now this is part of it. Don't forget, you don't think you can't have this piece because this needs you need to get this to get the volume of water flowing beneath. Shroud on. And last but not least, the bell. And there you go. Bell siphon. Have a quick look at siphons today and how I uh, how I personally solve my siphoning issues. Um, there are three main siphons that I use. The internal internal excuse me, internal siphon. This is going to sit inside a tank, completely inside, fed through a tank fitting, a skin fitting. Um, so as the water rises, it rises all the way up, fills up, fills up till it reaches this point, the water starts to run over. Um, once the water starts to run over, um, it blocks this pipe and then starts the suction from the large pipe. Sometimes with a small pump that's difficult to achieve, very difficult to achieve. Um, yeah, and these can become sometimes difficult to get to stop. It's not my favourite. This is um, the external U, which can be fitted into... Uh, externally of any of your pipe fitting so you'd have a skin fitting in the bottom say um, which would would come out onto uh, a series of, of pipes onto T's and then somewhere along the T um, you'd have a UU again same process water rises reaches this level once it's got to this level it starts to run over once it seals the pipe the volume of water it starts to suck gravity takes over and down into your uh, your reservoir, your, 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 your supply tank. And uh, again with the bell siphon. The bell siphon sits over, normally a little bit of a longer tube than this one. And the bell siphon would sit in a skin and then you'd have the bell that sits over the top. The water rises, once it reaches this level it starts to flow into here. Uh, once this, this tube seals with the water, then the air's sucked from this chamber and the siphon begins siphoning down to this level this tube's normally longer right so you've got a small volume of water how are you going to get these siphons to run and this is 21 and a half millimeter overflow pipe are we going to get it to run simple simple you don't need this you don't need this what you actually need if any of them aren't running is a piece of plastic tubing small piece of plastic tubing that will fit on the inside of your pipe okay take a straight connector place it over the end and that's it there's your restriction it's there now the easiest one to see it in is the bell side just because you can see it easiest Let's push the pipe inside and there it is, there's your restriction. Now you can make that you want it too small, but don't you can make it considerably smaller. I just find the next size diameter pipe. This is just plastic tubing. This is simple as it gets. So to restrict it, instead of using expensive, difficult to obtain reducers or enlargers, you just take a piece of plastic pipe and pop it on the inside. This will start the siphon. So we can get rid of this one and then we construct an internal one by placing our little tiny piece of tubing inside a straight connector. Inside. And putting them back together again. So this is the unit. This is the reducing unit we construct. That simple. A couple of little bits of pipe and there you're done. So small volumes of water excuse me it's just started to rain again in here in Manchester you may be able to hear it um, that's how I'm solving there's my reducer I don't use these to say expensive and difficult to obtain I use a tiny piece of plastic pipe inserted inside a plastic tube with a straight connect strike with knowledge or children 
everything I know. I